Hello, YouTube. Uh, this is Kevin with the Weird Homes Tour. I'm back at you again with another unique, interesting, eclectic home. If you're new to the channel, uh, we like to show off a new interesting home every week or so. So if you want to be on the forefront and see all these homes as they come out, be sure to subscribe to the Weird Homes Tour channel, as well as kind of ring that little bell for notifications. Uh, while you're at it, drop us a like, hit us up with a comment, let us know what you think and all that fun stuff. So I'm going to get right down to it. Uh, this week, we are super excited because we are going to be joined by Bob and Kate, uh, who's their home marries the my two favorite things, uh, art and food. Uh, which is going to be really exciting. So we're going to get right into it and say hello, Bob, Kate. How are you guys doing? Hey. Fantastic. Thanks, Thanks for you. Thanks for inviting us. Yeah, well, thank you so much for, for showing us your home. So uh, I'm going to give the reins over to you, and let's see your amazing home. Great. So here we are in the center of the action. This is the kitchen. This is the, the center of the home. And... Um, Bob, take it away. The center of our surreal universe. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we refer to this as, as deliciously surreal. And uh, I have, uh, for the last 20 years, been uh, working in the food space and creating and hosting shows under the nom de plume, the surreal gourmet. So just uh, for a quick step backwards, the definition of surrealism is natural objects in unnatural juxtapositions. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that characterizes this home really, really well in terms of how the art is grouped together. And we'll walk through a few of our favorite pieces that sort of marry, as you say, the food and the art, and you'll see what we mean. So let's start. But, well, let's start by just talking about how we've acquired a lot of things. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we, we don't think of ourselves as collectors. We have a collection of things, but um, we've acquired them over time. Some pieces of art we bought. Um, many I've traded for in trading meals and things uh, for art. Um, we've found things. We have made them ourselves. Made them ourselves. We've been gifted things, and and, and collectively, this is what we have in our house. Um, and many of the pieces, I, I think, they they evolve from being single pieces to being. Um, Collections. Collections. Or the, Even though we don't collect. Create, no, but creating a small story in the way that we put them together mm -hmm. and, and group them. And that's really, I think, the we most We like smart. to say that the objects are speaking to each other. Right. That they, they go into a dialogue. They speak to each other, mm -hmm. they speak to us. Exactly. So let's show you what we mean. So the center of the action. Is this beautiful 100-year-old 400 pound. i got to get a side on this because it's just so huge. Butcher block. And that my mother actually bought this uh, a million years ago from our local butcher, tiny little independent butcher when I was growing up as a kid who went out of, they were pushed out of business by the grocery stores, the big supermarkets. And we ended up with this. There's not a nail in it. Uh, as you can see, it's lit by these lights. It's, it's everything to me. It's, it's, it undulates where the, the butcher would, you know, in, in the sweet spot that the butcher would uh, cut on. And this is, a, this is a perfect place for eggs. There's another perfect spot here for slicing and dicing. And uh, so it's the center of the universe of my kitchen. And given that I work in the food world, I'm always cooking. But as you can see, this kitchen's super tiny. Um, it's both, it, it houses many things that I've collected in my travels. And then at the same time, it's incredibly practical and highly functional, even though there's not a lot of fancy gear in here. All right, let's start with the, these guys. All right, well, this is my collection of uh, 50s and 60s promotional toys. Some of them are piggy banks. And um, they, you know, lots of, as you can see, cereal and Mr. Mr. Peanut and this, the green sprout and the green giant back there. Colonel Sanders, who's the actual, the only mascot based on a real person. Um, some of these were uh, purchased for my toaster mobile, which is an Airstream trailer that uh, I used as the set for my first TV show called Surreal Gourmet. And uh, my art director, Sherry Hay, bought a few of them. And that inspired me to find more. Um, you can find these all over on eBay and wherever. And not terribly expensive either. But they're fun and they, they bring back great childhood memories. Yeah, good old. Or nightmares, 
as the case may be. (laughs) Um, Moving on, where do you want to move on to next? Our flea market chandelier. Ah, yes, our Rose Bowl flea market chandelier. No kitchen is complete with that one. Of course. And and, uh, as with many of the things in our house, uh, we often, it will often start as one thing and sort of evolve or just grow and expand as, as we find other things to add to it. This is a good case. We just keep adding little things. Um, back here is a Tabasco bottle from a TV commercial I did for Tabasco. There is also a toilet with a turd in it. Well, that's uh, from a, that's actually from a restaurant in Taiwan called Modern Toilet, where you would go sit on toilet seats and they would serve you curry in miniature toilet bowls. So oh. I think we got to explain these. Okay. Well, I am not a collector, as I like to say, but this is a collection of uh, chips from around the world that I've collected in my travels. Although I limit myself to the number of bags that can fit on this Humpty Dumpty rack that I bought at a, um, a little antique store in Northern Ontario. So here are some uh, salt and vinegar chips from Ireland, some haggis chips from Scotland. Over here, this is a, these are fugu chips. So fugu is the deadly poisonous Japanese blowfish. And these chips are uh, fugu flavored. And down here are some laksa flavored chips from Singapore, uh, some Thai shrimp chips, and it just goes on and on. They're all so beautiful, and you just want to tear into the bags and eat them. <laughs> Somehow we've managed not to. Yes. Well, so you, you, you haven't tried any of the, the flavors? Oh, no. I, I often will buy a second bag and, and taste them. One bag for display, one bag for eating. That's how that's how it works. That's Love it. So, so which one is your favorite one? Out of all of them? Yeah. Uh, actually, you know what? These ones are super, super tasty. Salted egg potato chips. So salted fish egg potato chips. Um, and uh, these were brought to me from a friend in Singapore. I'm not sure if that's where they originate, but um, they're really great. Lots of umami. Mm. Yeah, lots of flavor. And um, then just a bunch of colorful things that I've acquired that have all fit together. There's definitely an ice cream theme uh, and maybe even a cupcake theme. Yes, but it's really just a playful, colorful theme amidst, I mean, it, it all juxtaposed with actual functioning plates and whatnot that I use. Um, salt and pepper shakers here. Uh, this menu board is um, a good example of just a quick fix. It's, it's paint that you can buy at any hardware store comes in spray paint or in a in a can and uh, as you can see you just you just paint it on uh, on any surface that you want to turn into a chalkboard I, I think I did this about 20 years ago and it's stayed it's fantastic um, when friends come over for dinner as they used to do before the pandemic um, I always write the menu here and uh, and friends who are frequent guests when they walk into the house they immediately go to the chalkboard to see what's for dinner <laughs> uh, this is a, a lifesaver rack that I turned into a, a spice rack. So good. And my uh, right here, my ni- 1950s uh, O'Keefe Merritt gas stove, which is just, I think, a perfect example of the fact that it's really it, it, cooking is about the ingredients uh, and the cook. It's not about the fancy. You don't need no sub zero. Don't need the sub zero stove or uh, well, we, we do have a lovely fridge, uh, <laughs> which is, if you want to just take a peek at that, um, it's a big chill and it's a gorgeous fridge and certainly fits into this kitchen. Yeah. You don't see a lot of orange refrigerators. And when I saw that, I knew that it, it had to, it had to have a home here. Yes. Love it. All right. Shall we, uh, shall we roll nice, on? Nice collection. Oh yes. These are some, knives that I've acquired in my travels and from some of the episodes of my show. So I broke a Guinness World Record for the most, uh, for the fastest time to peel 50 pounds of onions with this razor sharp <laughs> knife. And- uh, how, how long did it take? Uh, two hours, two hours, two minutes and 47 seconds. Ooh. And then uh, I broke a Guinness World Record for the most 
pancakes flipped in an hour. How many? Me how many? I, <laughs> 600 and so. I get confused. Uh, I, I had a show called Glutton for Punishment, and um, I attempted to break uh, seven different Guinness World Records that, as part of the show. So um, it was a fun pursuit, but I didn't take it too seriously. Although, thanks for asking, I did break all seven records. <laughs> Bobby must have four arms of steel now. Uh, well, I don't know about that. Um, okay, let's roll outside roll of the kitchen. To our non-collection of sugar. Oh, yes. This is one other thing. These are objects that um, Kate and I both love um, because they're just everyday objects, but they're so gorgeous. These are sugar shakers from mostly from Different Europe. eras, I think, yeah, too. Yeah, different eras, um, mostly from Europe. And mostly I just asked if I could buy them at cafes and wherever I was. Uh, but they're just such a great example of how everyday objects that were thoughtfully designed, um, really, when you put a few of them together, take on, um, they, they just become art, really. Yeah. I mean, they, they're art even when they're in a cafe, but sometimes you have to uh, change the way they're presented to make you appreciate them as art. And I think we do that a lot in this house, which is why um, we don't think of ourselves as people who are out buying art all the time, because we're really looking for beautiful, beautiful aesthetics, mm -hmm. reflect aesthetics, if, if we collect anything. So we found these um, jacks in a flea market. Um, they're by Bill Curry, who is an American industrial designer. They've got really cool shadows on them too. Beautiful patina. Um, and we just love them for their lines and their shapes and the wear marks. Um, they were book, they're actually book they're bookends. They're bookends, yeah. yeah. Bookends. And they, they go really well against our yellow wall with our, our cell of Bart Simpson. Um, a bit, little backstory, I think that was uh, somehow acquired by somebody we know who might or might not have been working on the show. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Um, but also, uh, work, that, that all works so beautifully with this uh, Nelson knockoff couch that uh, you can find pretty well anywhere these days for not very much money. Um, and then over and here. Then we mentioned that we have dear friends who are amazing artists. This is our our dear son, Peter2009, who who knows 23 languages and chooses to speak none of them. Um, he's just one of my favorite pieces. Apparently he creeps people out, but for me, I find him to be quite beautiful. Um, Fausto Facciaponte is the artist and she chooses these really, really charged objects that make you sort of think about childhood in a new way. And she um, does work with teddy bears. This is her doll series. So she's a photographer. Mm -hmm. She actually uh, stitches the photographs together from many different uh, micro photographs. Yeah, and that's how you get that clarity in the center of his face and that deep penetrating gaze. Yes. And apparently when we rented the house out, the people who were in the house put a sheet over top of him because he was too intense for them. They couldn't handle him. <laughs> um, this is a little uh, cloud couch from Modernica. And then over here, this is a really beautiful piece that uh, I found. Um, it's actually designed by an LA furniture designer, but it's a person who uses lots of reclaimed piece, reclaimed uh, uh, fabrics and woods, and these are ends of uh, rolls of of yarn from Brazil. Uh, but when we talk about sort of putting pieces together, uh, this chair goes really beautifully with this Gary Taxali print. Gary's a friend of ours, and and then also a table that was uh, designed by Douglas Copeland. Douglas Copeland, the the author of Gen X. And the table is actually based on the design uh, of, at Center Ice. So it's an homage to uh, ice hockey and to, to professional hockey. 
there was just we just slid in a little bit of Canadian content in there. There you, you go. That? Yeah. <laughs> Love it. I got I got to ask: uh, is the is the magic chair used at all? Do you do you oh actually sit and use it? Yes, the magic chair is important for. I actually film story times there. It has become programmatically the center of my world as an educator. I do a lot of video work from the magic chair, which is how it it. Uh, became known as the magic chair. Yes. <laughs> Kate weaves her magic Children chairs. everywhere know it as the magic chair. Go Love ahead. it. So this deck came from a Parisian playground and it's one of those springy decks that causes so much joy in children around the world. And we just fell in love with it and knew that we wanted it in our living room as one does. I found it at a, at a architectural- Salvage. Salvage place in Toronto and actually brought it back on the plane with me, <laughs> believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And then um, many, many, many years later, we found this piece. By a local artist, Andrew Freider, who, um, I don't know, when we saw it, it sort of has this movement and this joy in it. And we just knew that the two pieces needed to be together. He's a self-taught artist, really, amazing eccentric person and uh and so the the two ducks have a dialogue of their own and speaking of dialogues this is another piece by uh, our friend gary taxali um which we love and seems to play very well with this piece that we bought, believe it or not, at a stall at our farmer's market by an artist named All Salmon Bell. And, uh, and we love this piece. It's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. And somehow the monster is, uh, is watching it out of the corner of his eye. And then over here, this is a piece that I created myself for a, a show I did, a gallery show um, that was called Surrealism Decanted. And so I did a whole series of wine glasses and um, decanters. And this one is actually, it's an actual grape vine that I dried and then literally glued with five minute epoxy to uh, a wine glass. Um, we have two pieces here. This is from a, um, graffiti collective in Haifa, Israel, called Broken Fingers, and they create these massive installations. A lot of their stuff that was done on the street actually gets destroyed overnight, gets painted over. So now they're actually quite famous and they have their own clothing line and all kinds of things. But we, they created this temple in this, in this gallery in downtown Los Angeles, and um, we bought a piece of it. And it's really cool because it's interactive and the cow can sway its head from side to side. And in terms of the piece beside it, I mean, there's an obvious graphic match. They're kind of, they're both targets. Um, that's our $10 Jasper Johns. <laughs> <laughs> and over here, this is something that I found many, many, many years ago. Kate will model them for you. This is a, this is a pair of seashell headphones uh, that I found at the Art Gallery of New South Wales. And Kate, what are you hearing there? The ocean. What are you really hearing? Um, the sound of my own blood flow. I just learned that. And then over here, we have three decanters that uh, I created and had blown by a, a glass blower for the same show I was describing before. So the first piece is a, a whale, and you actually pour the wine in through the blowhole, and then it sits in the whale, and uh, you pour it out of its mouth. And back here, I have a set of lungs because wine needs to breathe. And there's an expression in the wine world when somebody has a super precious wine that they're, they're being overly precious about, uh, you refer to it as a big dick wine. So I made uh, a decanter for such wines. Hey, this is a family hey, show here. Sorry. Uh, down here, we have a few things that we've either collected or been gifted, but our, our favorite piece, other than for those little cocktail monkeys, is uh, this art water uh, that was created by a friend of ours by the name of 
Bruno Bilio. Um, and this was sold at a very artful hotel in Toronto called the Gladstone. And um, Kate thinks that when you drink this water, you become instantly creative. Yeah, this is a leg splint um, made by uh, Charles and Ray Eames at Alto. And this is one of the first pieces they did in, in 1945. Commissioned by the U.S. Navy. Mm -hmm. Um, this was for people who were injured in the war. This is literally where a leg would go through and then and then fabric goes through these slats. And um, the metal splints are, were actually really harming the people who were wounded because they reverberate. So Charles and Ray Eames problem solved and created these um, veneers of wood that have resin glue between them and then sort of mold to shape the shape of a leg through uh, a system of heat and pressure. And that, that system, that process, basically becomes the foundation of all of the mid-century modern furniture that we know that comes after this. So this is kind of like the, the origin moment of that mid-century modern wood veneer look. And these, these three stools here are not made by the Eames, but that's certainly the same technique. So it's interesting how they, uh, they echo the the technique used in the 40s for this piece. And this is a Mickey, a Mickey Mouse head that we found in a little antique shop in Argentina, Argentina in Buenos Aires. And it was originally, I plunked it on top of a tequila bottle that I had in the shape of a worm. And somebody came in the house and knocked it over and it broke and they were all upset and they wanted to get us a new bottle, which you can still find. And we thought, oh, you know what? Maybe it was just meant to be. It actually be. looks better this way. <laughs> Has a little more edge to it, uh, literally and figuratively. <laughs> and so that's, you know, another thing that we like to do here is um, when things, you know, take on a different life for a different reason, we just go with the flow. Improvise. This is uh, another piece by Gary Taxali. This is the piece itself, but it was commissioned by the Bonnie Dune uh, winery. Uh, as a label, and as it happens, I had the good fortune of drinking a bottle of that wine, and now these two pieces were together. Uh, another piece of art that I never really considered to be art originally, and that's a, a fur coat that was willed to me by my father, uh, who had it uh, until his 80s and this was just sort of in my closet in storage and we went to a restaurant in, in northern sweden called Favakin, and uh, magnus nelson the the owner chef owner of the restaurant had a beautiful fur coat that was displayed on a wall and it just made me realize that, you know something that's sitting in a closet if it's properly displayed can become art and so that's uh that's when we came home and pulled it out of the closet and put it on the wall. Uh, and then over here, we have a, a trio of pieces. Kate, do you want to talk about this? Sure. This is my favorite flower dress, which I get to wear on a regular basis when I'm talking about pollination and plants. Um, and it's from one of your shows. It's, it was a flower dress designed by uh, Sherry Hay, the designer from our show, Surreal Gourmet for an ep a wedding themed episode. And then that's a bike, a fixed gear bike that I ride occasionally. And another one of the tables by- Douglas Copeland. Uh, and so the three of these pieces were not always together, but um, they're, as you can see, for obvious reasons, they really do kind of belong together. And so now they are together. Hey, do you wanna talk about this? Yeah, this is something that we made together. Um, we had just seen the Calder show and got really inspired. And it turned out that we took a road trip to San Francisco and our radiator caught on fire and we were stranded by the side of the road. We were wondering what to do. So we decided to make our own mobile made from the found objects that we could find along Highway 5. Along with the radiator cover that you can mm -hmm. see in the center of that oval piece on the left. And this kind of, this mobile to me sort of symbolized um, our union together and, and we weren't married at the time that we made this mobile but after we made this mobile we realized we could get through anything because we were creative people that would take the most negative situation and make it into a creative positive moment. Um, coming from a, 
a less negative <laughs> moment. Uh, we were at a museum in Stockholm in Sweden and saw this amazing um, piece of art, a sculptural piece, a mobile uh, made entirely of hangers. And the one at the museum was probably three or four times the size with three or four times as many hangers. But uh, I built this as an homage to that. And then, um, and I lit it from below. And just a good example of how even something is as simple as a light can create a layer of um, of texture and and you know add a layer to anything that you're making, and that's a, a, another example of that is over here. This is a, a tumbleweed that I found in Griffith Park, and um, as you can see, I've hung it and put a light in the center of it. And in addition to being a, a beautiful lamp, it's also an homage to the Eames, who famously found one as they were traveling across the country moving from the East Coast to the West Coast as they started their lives together. And it symbolized their love together. And so I've turned this into a lamp, but it, it also has beautiful shadows and um, just really takes up, fills the space beautifully. And here we are to say hello. Hello. Where, where should we move next? Um... Well, we'll just talk very quickly about this sink, which is to me a piece of functional art, mm -hmm. um, which is gorgeous. It's from Finland. It was probably the most exorbitant purchase I made uh, in the in the bathroom or in the house here, actually. And let's move on to this. This is our friend Bruno Bilio, so the same guy who did the art water. He also um, was our inaugural artist in residence, which basically means that he lived with us. And he created these gold um, logs during his time as our artist in residence. It was a very, very difficult application process, but we decided on him. <laughs> just, to, just, uh, just to put a finer point on it, we just decided to invite friends who are artists to come and stay with us for a week or two weeks at mm. a time. And we would cook for them and make them as comfortable as possible so they could work on creating their art. And then we don't let them go until they leave something for us that we can add to our collection. <laughs> That's how we build our collection. Yeah. Um, this is a, a bathroom cabinet that I saw in a fancy magazine and had a, a furniture maker make for us. And then suites over here. So over here, we've got... Um, Astro Boy by Jared Yamahada, a local LA artist. He's an illustrator and a graphic designer and an art director. And he just goes so beautifully underneath our Hungarian first aid kit, which has all the wear um, and the beautiful patina of a, I think it's from the forties, an object from the forties. Well stocked with <laughs> band aids and a mounty. Well, the mounty, of course, is Canadian and is always prepared for anything, as one has to be with an emergency kit. <laughs> That's our second piece of Canadian content. There you go. We just snuck it in. <laughs> um, and uh, lastly, we're just going to run on up to the deck for a quick second. So, this is our swimming pool ladder to nowhere, um, except the nowhere being our roof, but there is no swimming pool. However, there is a, another gorgeous view of the Hollywood sign. And then last but not least, I was talking about the toaster mobile that was the anchor for my show, Surreal Gourmet. And the toaster mobile was an Airstream trailer with uh, a complete professional kitchen built inside the entire interior space. And then I had these two eight foot long, three foot high slices of toast put built out of aluminum and put on top of the airstream because to me airstreams always resembled uh vintage toasters and uh and that's our show kevin that's that's it that wow is... thank you thank you so much bob thank you so much kate uh i, I appreciate uh, you showing your amazing home now, uh, for people, you, you mentioned your show a little bit. Uh, if anyone is kind of interested in like following up, learning a little bit more, where should they go? Uh, 
<laughs> they should just go into their own kitchen and uh, <laughs> and cook. Now you can find my show, uh, my show Glutton for Punishment, and my show World's World's Weirdest Restaurants on Amazon. Uh, actually, streams for free, and um, you can find my cookbooks uh, online or in your favorite local cookbook store, including my new book Flavor Bomb. And you can follow me on Instagram at Bob Bloomer. And Kate, where will they find you? <laughs> you can find me in the garden with my plants. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the, the best place. Uh, Bob, Kate, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for sh sharing your amazing home. And uh, thank you, everyone, who watched this amazing video. Uh, if you want to see more like this, just be sure to subscribe to our channel. Uh, let us know that you liked it. Uh, hit us up with a, a like, comment, all that fun stuff. And we'll catch you later. All right. Bye, everyone. All right. Bye. Thanks for hanging uh, out with us. <laughs>